I got involved in politics as a very young woman. I was probably 19 years old, 18 years old. Uh, I married a man who was interested in politics. We did it like other couples, you know, go bowling, <laughs> join dance clubs. Um, we joined the Young Democrats at the University of Texas. And we participated in political campaigns. We helped uh, uh, rabble rouse, carry picket signs, uh, and we had a ball at it. Uh, we were involved in the uh, sort of what they call the grassroots. If there was a protest, uh, we were participants. And these were the days of civil, the civil rights marches, the protests. Uh, against a government that repressed uh, African Americans in this country. And it was a great time to, to be a part of politics. Does that still feel familiar to you, the feeling that kind of drove you into that? Oh, very much so. Um, I have a passion about specific issues. I feel very strongly about what the government is supposed to do as opposed to what the politicians don't do. And I'm an avid reader of the newspaper. I used to listen to television news a lot, and I still do just to know what's current and to know what the public is hearing. But by and large, the best source of news in the country, I think, is the New York Times. People say that the Times is too left of center, but whether it is or not, it is still the best source of information. That was a description that was very kind of activism driven, and yet you played so many roles, different kinds of roles since then. Has that experience kind of changed that, those interests that you had in politics to begin with? Actually, I don't think my interests have changed since I was a very young woman. I was a debater in high school, and I went to college on a debate scholarship. Um, that experience of arguing both sides of a question led me to become involved in issues, and those issues still interest me. Uh, having been a county commissioner and a treasurer and a governor, I still have um, a lot of understanding of how the system really works and how things could be done. So I think that core, that, that sort of drive uh, to know and to help and to make things change for the better, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a lifelong lifelong pursuit. I have a better sense now of how much time I have. I used to sign up for everything that interested me. Now I'm able to say no to things I know that are going to absorb my time, that aren't going to go anywhere, that are uh, going to involve a lot of uh, really intense and interested people, but is really not going to produce anything. I'm interested in how you kind of make those assessments. Let's talk maybe about one area that you're well known and seems like anyway for being interested in, that's women's issues. Yes. How do you, how do you feel that has played out? I mean, you've been involved in that in so many different ways. When you, when you look now and assess the kind of work you've done, mm -hmm. you feel like it's been successful? Oh, there's no question that the very fact that young women have the same opportunity in college, that they have a chance to play sports because of Title IX, uh, that they have the right to terminate a pregnancy that doesn't make sense in their life or for the life of a, of a child, um, the fact that we have equal opportunity in the workplace, all those things would never have happened if those of us who were participants of the women's movement had not been there and fought so hard. You sound satisfied. Oh, I'm hardly satisfied. I'm outraged most of the time uh, at how the progress seems to stall, how difficult it is for um, young people to realize that 
their very freedoms are in jeopardy if they're not willing to fight for them. But you also have to look back and accept and be pleased that things have changed. Um, my grandmother, uh, during a period of her life, did not have the right to vote. The law in Texas was that idiots, imbeciles, the insane, and women could not vote. And less than one generation later, I was the governor of Texas. Now, that will tell you that we have progressed. How about women in office in general? Do you think there's been enough progress in that area in terms of women being elected to office? I think women elected, getting elected to office is a, is a, it's a slow thing. They, women have to prove themselves more than men do. Uh, and we also have the continuing challenge of uh, the fact that we are the ones that have the babies. And everybody wants to know, how are you going to take care of a baby and, how, and, and be in office? Of course, they don't ask that question about, how are you going to have a baby and have a job when you have to have the money to help support the guy you married? Um, but that, that, that stress in that contest uh, between the importance and the responsibility of child rearing uh, plus public service on top of it means that you're willing to give a dedication uh, to, of your life and, and an energy in your life that not everyone has, male or female. Our future really has always been in the pipeline. That is, we have to get elected to the local level, city council, county level. We have to then go to the state legislature. Uh, then we might have an opportunity to run statewide. Then we might have an opportunity to run for Congress or the United States Senate. And, and it takes a long time a long time to make those changes. It's the same for blacks and it's the same for Hispanics because we're going against the tide. The tide has always been that white males are the ones that are going to occupy these big elective positions. Um, but we have made a dramatic change in this country and it will continue. I expect to see a woman president in my lifetime. It's amazing. You, was that one of the things that you were that what is one of the things you were proudest of as governor your appointments then and the promotion of of people's careers that were women minorities yeah it's always hard to point to just one single thing but certainly the fact that we changed the face of government so that the population of Texas looked at the people in power and said, that's someone that looks like me. We never had a quota system or a specific number that we were trying to achieve, but we wanted the people that I was responsible for appointing to at least look like the percentage of the population. Here's why that matters. It's not that we are smarter or better. It is that we bring a different dimension and a different discussion to the policy table. Uh, if we are not there, then a large segment of the population is going to be left out. Um, little girls grow up differently than little boys. Issues are different when seen from our side and it is when seen from their side. Um, a person of color will tell you how different the world is seen from inside a skin of color than a skin of white. And so all of those points of view should be present at the table when the laws are written and the policies are made. Another reason that it matters is that children cannot aspire to do big things unless they see someone that looks like them doing it. 
you ask kids in the barrio in Texas or in the ghettos of the cities what people do in the big, tall buildings downtown, and most of them can't tell you because their moms and dads are not in those buildings unless it's to clean it. Unless they can see it as a reality for them, they're never going, they're never going to be in those positions. I'm so impatient with politicians who mouth those platitudes like dream the impossible dream and all of that stuff. How are you gonna dream it if you've never seen it and had the experience in your own life? But once you see that someone else that looks like you has done it, it gives you the idea, well, that maybe you could do that too.